Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday, December 19th. Hope you had a wonderful weekend and prepare yourself for even colder than these temperatures. You bet, but in the meantime, we've got showers in the air. Some of the downpours have been pretty heavy. I know Austin was under an advisory earlier, Justin. Yeah, we've gotten some pretty good rain moving through, which is a welcome sight. It is, but uh, it's making things uh, pretty chilly out there this morning and, of course, wet on the road. Stephen will tell you about that here in just a second. You, you see the downpours coming through here. So where you see these red cords, that's the heavier rain. We've seen a few claps of thunder with this, too. Closing in on a quarter of an inch of rain at the airport, which is uh, really pretty good. We're still going to finish the year very dry, but any more rain we can add at this point it, it is a good thing. Uh, let's a little, look a little closer at this uh, downpour here in Southern Bear County. That's working its way to Elmendorf. We are seeing a couple of lightning strikes with this, and this will affect areas right along 1604 on the city's south side there, just east of 281. So that's kind of the heaviest uh, little cell we have right now. And by the way, the edge of this will start to move through, and I think by noontime, rain will wind down here in San Antonio. But seeing a really good uh, downpour up there around uh, Gonzales with uh, quite a few lightning strikes there. So this is uh, electrical right around the city of Gonzales, and you're getting some very, very heavy rain at this moment right there along Highway 183. That is also the case in Seguin. Had a nice area of rain work through your neck of the woods. So off and on rain here next couple of hours before this all begins to uh, move out. Uh, temperatures though are going to stay pretty cool. And if you're traveling today, and a lot of people are starting to hit, hit, hit the roads, uh, Dallas just is going to be cloudy, 47. But you will run into some rain in places like Houston, Brownsville, uh, Corpus Christi. It clears out as you go west. El Paso sunny today, 59. Uh, temperatures right now 47 degrees at the airport, 45 Kerrville, a lot of 40s on the map. Chilly, cloudy, rainy, and we're not going to warm up all that much because clouds, as I mentioned, do hold. Even though the rain goes away by noontime, clouds hold, and that means highs will only be in the low 50s. That's it. 50 degrees by 5 o'clock, maybe, maybe a few peaks of sun very, very late in the day. So we've got the rain today, then we got the bitter cold heading our way Thursday. We've got an update on that for you in just a few minutes, but we've got to check in on the roads now. Stephen, with these wet roads, how are things looking? Well, Justin, things have been pretty busy this morning, and that's a surprise, uh, really, just because a lot of folks have been off today for the holidays. But let's get a quick look around town and show you what is taking place, because we have been seeing a lot of wet roads out there, and even a stall there at 35 at Topper Wine. You know, traffic has been light, but we have had our fair share of issues, and I think it is safe to say that the rain or those wet roads have probably been the big factor as to why we were seeing a lot of problems out there. Uh, this is some of the latest stuff we are catching on to I-35 Southbound at Malone Avenue. A crash being reported there at this hour. No major slowdowns have been reported in this direction, but keep in mind, first responders have had quite a busy morning because the problems continue. 37 Southbound at Southeast Military. We did have a crash that looks like it's about to clear from the Transguide camera, so some better news to report out there. But of course, we've been monitoring the situations throughout the morning as we give you now that back uh, the look back here on Transguide. Wet roads are what you can expect, but you also know construction is going to continue in and around the Alamo City despite the holidays. So hey, plan your commute ahead of time. Scan this QR code that is now on your screen that will take you to our KSAT traffic page. I updated the list of current closures in and around our areas. So just make sure to plan your commute ahead of time and drive safe, especially if you are heading out of town for the holidays. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Let's look at today's 9 at 9. The House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the Capitol will hold its final public hearing this afternoon. The committee will release an executive summary of the report, and members are expected to provide details on criminal referrals it'll make to the Justice Department. Members plan to release a final report to the public on Wednesday. Also happening today, the trial begins for the Proud Boys leader and four others charged with seditious conspiracy for their alleged roles in the Capitol riot. A January 6th committee hearing on extremist groups prompted the judge to delay the trial this summer. Now he's letting jury selection begin. The five defendants have pleaded not guilty. 19 Republican-led states, including Texas, are planning to file an appeal with the U.S. Supreme Court, arguing Title 42 should remain in place. The rule is set to expire Wednesday and is expected to trigger an influx of migrants on the southern border. The White House insists there is a, quote, robust effort underway to manage the border in a safe, orderly, and humane way when Title 42 lifts, end quote. FTX founder Sam Bankman-Fried has reportedly decided not to fight his extradition to the U.S. Federal prosecutors indicted him on eight criminal charges last week that include wire fraud and conspiracy. He is accused of misusing investors' funds 
Bankman Fried is expected to appear in court today. If convicted, he could spend the rest of his life behind bars. Gas prices continue to fall. AAA reporting the national average for a gallon of regular unleaded at 314, about 16 cents lower than this time last year. Here in San Antonio, the average is 252, and across Texas, it's about 10 cents higher. AAA is predicting nearly 113 million Americans will travel this week, most of them behind the wheel. Oil prices rose early today, two benchmarks gaining ground after plunging more than $2 a barrel on Friday. Investors spooked by the prospect of more interest rate hikes and recession fears. Today's price gains were led by China's easing COVID restrictions and the U.S. decision to buy oil to refill its strategic petroleum reserve. With borrowing costs arising, there's renewed interest in mortgage products like temporary buy-downs. They lower homeowners' monthly payments for a few years. The rate gradually rises till it's in line with market conditions at the time the loan was made. Lenders or home builders usually cover the cost. Today is a deadline for priority mail delivery with USPS to make sure your gifts are delivered before Sunday, Christmas Day. The deadline for FedEx Express saver delivery is tomorrow, and Three Day Select with UPS also has a deadline of Tuesday in order for packages to be delivered by Saturday, Christmas Eve. Today is the first full day of Hanukkah. The eight-day Jewish celebration commemorates the rededication during the second century BC of the second temple in Jerusalem. Hanukkah began yesterday evening and ends on the evening of Monday, December 26th. The holiday is celebrated with the lighting of the menorah, traditional foods, games, and gifts. And that's today's nine at nine. Any morning headlines, new drama with Twitter and Elon Musk. Could he be stepping down? And a heartwarming story of a mother and son walking the graduation stage together. Max Massey joins us live in the studio. And Max, where are we starting today? Good morning, guys. We have a lot to get to, but we're going to start with two terrifying situations for passengers on two separate flights experiencing, get this, extreme turbulence. So just into the newsroom, uh, multiple United Airlines passengers, they were injured just this morning. Their flight from Rio de Janeiro to Houston, it encountered severe turbulence. Now, KPRC, our sister station in Houston, reporting as many as 15 people injured in the flight. Now, it, it did just land in Houston, George Bush Intercontinental, around 5 this morning. And the second flight now making national headlines. So we know over the last few days, there's been a couple experiences with violent turbulence. So this flight, this one right here, from Phoenix to Honolulu, it was carrying people traveling for the holidays. It ex encountered, like we just said, severe turbulence right before landing. So, I mean, it sent some unrestrained people and even objects flying about the cabin, seriously injuring 11 people. Now, in all, 36 people had to receive medical treatment after yesterday's turbulent Hawaiian Airlines flights. They had bumps, bruises, cuts, and nausea. The full flight had about 300 people on board, and it carried a lot of people to Hawaii for the holidays. Now, the Hawaiian Airlines chief operating officer says this turbulence is isolated and it's unusual, noting that his airline hadn't experienced anything like this in recent history. It looks like everybody's going to survive. There were no fatalities, and I'm hoping folks don't have to stay in the hospital too long and can get back to their loved ones, whether they live here or are on vacation, and of course the crew members. So right now, investigators are pointing to the weather. Now, the airline was aware of the weather forecast and the unstable air and weather conditions, but they said they had no warning that this particular patch of air where the turbulence occur occurred was in any way dangerous. And like I said, right now, still that ongoing investigation. Now to the latest on this man, Elon Musk, and his journey, we'll say, with Twitter. He could be stepping down, according to a new poll that he actually posted on Twitter. There's a lot going on here. So the owner and CEO of Twitter, the social media site, created a Twitter poll over the weekend asking if he should step down. According to the results, 57% voted yes, 43% voting no. Musk did say that he would follow the results of the poll, but he has yet to comment on the final tally. Now, the results in this informal and possibly meaningless survey were based on, get this, more than 17 million Twitter responses. Now, Twitter has been going through some chaos and some rough patches since Musk took the reins, mass layoffs, and of course, those policy changes. Now to a heartwarming story, a proud moment for a mother and son in Maryland, both receiving their college degrees over the weekend. 
and not an easy journey. Carolyn Patton and her son Emmanuel both enrolled in the University of Maryland Global Campus. She studied humanities, he studied public safety administration, and together they walked the stage. Right there, mother and son, they accepted their degrees from the president of the university. So I said, you know what, mom, I'm going to make sure that you get this degree at the same time as I do. And so I made sure I stepped with that promise, regardless of all the hardship and everything like that. I still want to make sure that I kept my promise, be a man of my word. And he says, no, if I can do it, you're going to do it. We're going to do this together. I'm like, I don't know about that. He said, yes, we're going to do this together. I made a promise, mom, and we're going to do this. So I had a meltdown with coming to school, but I got back on track. That is amazing. They embarked on the journey together. They worked together and of course they graduated together. Now, Carolyn was a single mother. She raised two children after she moved from Mississippi to Maryland. She said she always wanted to get her degree, but life kept getting in the way. And now she says that mission is accomplished. And speaking of mission accomplished, Argentina, a huge congrats to Messi, the team in the country, after what might go down as the best and most thrilling World Cup final in history. And obviously, as you can see on the screen right there, look at this video, the country is celebrating accordingly. So if you missed it, a crazy comeback by France, pushed it to 3-3, three, three, a shootout. And at the end of it, Argentina would win the first World Cup for them in more than 30 years. Messi finally doing it, but take a look at that. I mean, wow. I don't even want to come back to camera on us just yet because imagine That's if quite the party, yeah, yeah I mean, the streets, That's everything. Nuts. So get this, Max. So a uh, lady that used to be a receptionist here named Bronwyn. She's yeah. retired, lives in Buenos Aires now. Oh, and I said, good luck sleeping last night. She wrote this morning, <laughs> celebrations till three, no traffic, just people in the street singing, banging drums, you name it. Momentous to be wow. here. Wow. Yeah, quite a night How down exciting. in Argentina. Yep. Oh, did you guys catch any of the game? Oh, yes. absolutely. Oh, yes, yeah, the I last guess. part, which was the best. The best. Well, yeah. we were watching the newsroom and it got 2 0. I was like, oh, well, couldn't be that great. And then. Yes. And then, yeah, people who don't even love soccer were totally uh -huh. enthralled. Every, yes. Everybody was glued to the TV. <laughs> Indeed. Exactly. Right, Max, thank you. Thanks. Right now, 9, 10, 47 degrees. Here's a look at what's coming up next. A new club is supporting women in robotics. How the group hopes to inspire young girls, too. Next. And let's look out there with live cam, a cool 47 degrees right now. We've had some rain in the area. You can even see some of those raindrops on our camera right now. Be careful out there. We'll be right back. What this chapter is going to do is really elevate San Antonio's profile within our country, throughout the world, as a place, as a center for advanced robotics. And we're open for business. And hopefully, you know, that'll attract more people to our region to do this type of work. A new club forming in San Antonio to support women who work in robotics. Tiffany Leto shows us how the group hopes to inspire young girls to enter the robotics industry. This is the Mechanical Mustangs team. Okay, which one do you want to go for first? Uh, that one. Also known as the No Boys Allowed team. Oh, that's good. It's a girls robotics team. When the girls from the robotics team at Lutheran High School get together, they create something special. They design, build, and program robots to do various tasks. Nice. I usually do the software. 17-year-old Julia Brockman is passionate about robots and proud to be on this team. I just love creating something that can, although it might seem like it can't help people, it really can in the future. Go down a little bit, grab. Today, the girls show their skills to women working in the robotics industry. Ivy Vasquez Sandoval is a robotics software engineer. Nowadays, with these girls that are coming up in the robotics scene, I feel that they can be unapologetically women and unapologetically feminine, and I think that that is a wonderful change. Sandoval and Lydia Unterreiner work for Plus One Robotics. A lot of um, programming the robot to pick up packages a specific way. Unterreiner says women bring something different to this field. A lot of my science and math core teachers were always male, but I think women do bring a different 
essence to the industry. Sarah Rogers works at Southwest Research Institute. Um, my team works on industrial robotics, trying to make them faster and smarter than they were before. The three professionals are part of the first chapter of Women in Robotics in Texas. I am excited that um, younger women are going to be able to see opportunities that maybe they didn't realize were available to them. The group will be hosting different events next year, including here at Area 21, and they hope to start a mentoring program for women and young girls in robotics. Oh wait, I think you got it. Oh, oh gosh, she's barely on. Oh, just go fast. For Brockman, this is only the beginning of her journey. I want to be a software engineer. I really love coding. It's really awesome. For the next group of girls who might be interested in learning robotics, Brockman has a message. Just go for it. Like, don't be afraid. There's a lot of people out there that can help you, and there's a lot of resources that, you know, you can learn from. And I think it's a great learning experience. Tiffany Whitehouse, KSAT 12 News. Not a moment to waste. Justin has a lot to talk about in the forecast. Yes, you do. Yeah, we uh, showed you the radar earlier. We had some of those storms coming through. Uh, we have a picture of some small hail coming down in Gonzales. It's not big. It's the pea sized uh, stuff, but uh, there is a little bit of hail mixed in with some of these storms. Nothing to be concerned about. You uh, you may just see a little bit of, of the, the, the really small pieces of ice there with uh, some of these bigger storms and we'll switch over to the radar and I'll show you where those are at this hour. We see some of that activity coming through Wilson County now. Uh, pretty stout looking uh, storm there with a lot of lightning strikes and there probably is a little bit of small hail mixed in there. We'll go ahead and put this in motion for you to give you an idea of how everything's moving. Uh, moving off to the north and east, generally at a pretty good clip. And as we look across the city of San Antonio, uh, we do have a heavier uh, downpour there on the city's east side and now working into downtown as well. What you can expect with this kind of activity is just some really heavy rain. It won't last very long, but it will, you know, cause you use your windshield wipers uh, at a high rate. And this is going to move through China Grove, uh, Lone Oak, up through Atkins as it moves north, and then another little cell there working into downtown, which is going to create some pretty heavy rain there. Let's uh, take a look at that Wilson County storm because that's probably uh, the heaviest storm we're seeing right now. And that is just to the north of Stockdale. And where you start to see some of these purple colors, I'd imagine that's where we're probably seeing some small hail. We'll put in our threats map here. And anywhere you see this purple, that's where you can see some of that really small pea-sized hail as these storms move through. So that's around Stockdale and then back down along Highway 119 there, uh, there is a threat for that. Again, it's not going to cause any damage or anything like that, but uh, just know that it is around. And we'll put it back in motion here. And uh, that's starting to lift north of Stockdale, but it will work its way up uh, to the north here uh, next hour or so up along Highway 123. And eventually, this might make its way up towards Seguin. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, the rain, the storms here in San Antonio will come to an end, we think, uh, about lunchtime, and they'll start to shift east after that, and we're just left with cloudy skies. Well, let's look at some of the rainfall totals. I just updated these. Uh, Timberwood Park, closing in on an inch, eight tenths of an inch. We're over a quarter of an inch now at the airport. That's good. Chavano Park, about half an inch. Sutherland Springs, eight hundredths of an inch. Gonzalez has already picked up close to a quarter of an inch. And you'll see these numbers go up a little bit more before it's all said and done. So. Good as we uh, finish out the year, still probably going to finish in second place for driest year ever. This helps a little bit and still some rain coming down at the airport. We're sitting at 48 right now with northerly winds at about 12. That makes it feel chilly out there. We have wind chills right now in the low 40s. Uh, so grab the umbrella, grab the jacket if you are going to be out and about. Rain chances begin to taper off noontime 30%. We're still in the 40s though, and I don't think we really lose the clouds. That'll keep things chilly today, 51 for a high. Some places may stay in the 40s though, and we'll still get a northeasterly wind anywhere from 5 to 15. Mostly cloudy overnight. Fog develops by tomorrow morning, so it'll be a foggy start to your Tuesday. Let's look at the big picture here, and you see all the rain. It stretches from San Antonio to uh, East Texas and just south of Dallas. Pretty good swath of rain there into the parts of Louisiana. And then I want to take you up north. Uh, this is the northern part of the United States and parts of Canada. Look at these numbers, negative 15, negative 16, negative 6. There is some bitter cold air that is going to spill down the plains, and we're going to feel some of that. So as we uh, look at the forecast here, that spills south. Tuesday and Wednesday, still pretty nice. We're not expecting much, but by Thursday morning, 
This front's starting to work into the Texas Panhandle. 14 in Amarillo, rest of the states in the 40s. Thursday is going to be one of those weird days where it is going to be very cold in the Texas Panhandle, and it could be very warm in South Texas. We're talking 11 single digits in the Texas Panhandle compared to 70s in South Texas. We think the front heads San Antonio early afternoon and then temperatures just tumble from there. We may make it into the 60s, but we end up in the teens by Friday morning and uh, wind chill values. When you're talking winds gusting 20 to 25, which I think they very well may, and you've got temperatures in the teens and 20s, look at the wind chill. Two. That's what it may feel like Friday morning. Negative numbers in Kerrville, Bernie, Canyon Lake, San Marcos. It is going to be very, very cold. Here's what you need to plan for. Hard freeze Thursday night, Friday morning. Additional freezes uh, Saturday night into Christmas morning. And we've got to think about the four P's here. Pets, plants, people, pipes, especially if you're planning to leave town. You don't want to forget about this. High temperatures, 30s on Friday, 40s or close to 40 Christmas weekend. Wintry precip is not expected. So travel won't be impacted around here, but there could be places around the country where travel could be a little dicey. 58 degrees Tuesday, 56 Wednesday, falling temps Thursday. Yeah, we may be around 66 midday, but that's not where we end up. 18 Friday morning, 34 Friday, barely getting above freezing. Parts of the hill country could stay below freezing for 48 hours Thursday night through uh, perhaps even Saturday. So uh, all things we have to consider here. This is not, though, February 2021. Right. ERCOT yes. assures us we have enough power. Good. I think we'll be just fine. It's just going to be cold. We do want to protect the four Ps, though. All right. Yep. Yeah, that's a good reminder. Thank you, Justin. Yep. 922, 47 degrees. And we're continuing our features of some of the great graduates in our area. When we come back, we're going to meet one woman who managed to accomplish her goal and cross the stage. Several students are waking up this morning as college graduates after crossing the stage yesterday with their degree from Texas A&M University, San Antonio. Sarah Costa introduces us to one woman raising the bar for her children and those around her, inspiring them never to give up despite the challenges they may face. Gloria Reyes is now a two-time college graduate from Texas A&M San Antonio. She also has dyslexia, but that hasn't stopped her from earning two degrees, 10 years apart. Her bachelor's degree in arts and science came in 2012, and now Reyes has her master's degree in business administration. 10 years ago, Gloria had a plan to get her master's soon after her first degree. But then life forced a change of plans. I was asked to take in my two nieces that they needed a place to go. So I stepped up and took them in. And I thought this was going to only be temporary, um, but it turned out, you know, that it would be a lot longer. Now a single mother, Reyes was determined to be a role model to her children. So she went back to school and finished what she started. Despite staying up late, working, studying, taking care of her family, Rhea says it was all worth it. I went to go try on the the, uh, the cap and gown. And when I tried it on, I saw myself in the mirror. I was just like, you know, a tearful moment. <laughs> you know, it's just like, wow, I did it. I, we did it, you know. It was, it, it, I told my girls, it's like, it wasn't just my accomplishment. You helped me get there. You were my motivation. We asked Reyes if she had any advice for college students today, especially to those struggling with learning disabilities. Reach out. Ask for help. I mean, I've, I tell my kiddos all the time, the worst anybody can ever tell you is no. And if you're already expecting the no and you don't go ask for the help, then you'll never know what the yes could have been. If you have a disability, a learning disability especially, it's not anything to be ashamed of. It just means you learn differently. There is a light. You know, give it to God and just keep going. And that's what I've been doing. Rhea says she plans to use her degree to continue her work in the aviation field. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. 927, 47 degrees. We'll be right back. Now to the U.S.-Mexico border, where cities on both sides are bracing for a surge as of, of as many as 5,000 new migrants a day. It comes as a pandemic-era policy restricting immigration is set to expire this week. ABC's Mireya Villarreal is in El Paso with the latest. Overnight, El Paso city leaders pushing to prepare for a looming influx of migrants as temperatures continue to drop. 
there's not enough shelters to house what, we're, what, we're, what we could possibly see in the next few days. So we want to make sure that we have the ability to set up temporary shelters, sheltering systems. Title 42, a health policy used by the Trump administration during the pandemic to expel migrants without allowing them to request asylum, is set to expire on Wednesday. Governor Greg Abbott predicting chaos during an interview with ABC's Martha Raddatz. Totally unacceptable. It's going to be catastrophic, not just for Texas, but for the United States of America. For months, the city of El Paso has seen an influx of migrants, 2,200 on average each day this month alone. Shelters are at capacity and transportation out of town is limited, forcing many of these migrants to wait it out on city sidewalks, prompting local business owners to help. At the end of the day, these are just human beings. Um, regardless of how we feel politically, you have to put kindness first, humanity first. So transportation and sheltering are the two biggest issues here in El Paso. You can see that on full display right behind me. A number of people sleeping near the bus stop, hoping to be the first in line to get a ticket out of town. A number of GOP-led states are now asking the U.S. Supreme Court to step in. If the chief justice believes that the entire court should hear this case, he could put a pause on Title 42 expiring to let both sides prepare their cases. Videa Villarreal, ABC News, El Paso, Texas. Let's look out there with live cam. We started off cold, still chilly out there, 47 degrees and a little rainy. Damp and cold, and it stays that way for another couple of hours. We've still got quite a bit of rain on the radar. We're watching some of these heavier storms. They could produce some small hail. There'll be some lightning strikes, but mostly, mostly it's just good rain. Let's go right to the radar and show you where the activity is right now. We do have a nice little cell working through eastern parts of Bear County and eastern uh, sides of San Antonio, and then also uh, another pretty significant sail working its way up into Gonzales County. We saw some small hail there in Gonzales. You may get another round with this storm that is uh, moving in your direction. Let's look, uh, look a little closer here at Bear County. And most of this is moving pretty quick, so we're not worried about flooding or anything like that. But you could get a few lightning strikes, especially with this cell here. And then we've got another one moving right through downtown and a couple more spotty ones working south to north across the city. I'll zoom in a little bit closer to this particular cell, and it's just made its way through Atkins, moving into St. Hedwig. Where you see those purple colors right there, that's where you might see a little bit of that small hail. It'll be brief, though, and this will work its way up towards I-10. Uh, there near the Guadalupe Bear County line, uh, working uh, mainly off to the north and east. That's been the general motion of this activity today. And then a closer look at this bigger cell that is working now into Gonzales County. Not as heavy as it once was, but you're still getting pretty good heavy rain there along uh, State Highway 80 and then over towards the Smiley area. And again, that'll lift up towards Gonzales. The edge of the rain is just to our west, so that'll start to move through. And I think after lunch, San Antonio will be done with the rain. We're not done with the clouds, though. The clouds stick around and keep things pretty cool today. 48 in San Antonio, 46 in Lotus, 43 Bernie Stage, 45 in Comfort. Still with a little rain there. The case set 12-hour forecast. We'll keep rain chances through noontime. Then we'll start to bring them down a little bit and take them out of the forecast by the afternoon. 51 and cloudy at 4 o'clock, maybe a peak of sun around 5. But then clouds... Redeveloped tonight, we could see some fog tomorrow morning. And then, of course, we have to talk about that big cool down headed our way later this week. More on that in just a few minutes. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Thanks, Justin. And the Cowboys lose a thriller in overtime. Max is back, adding RJ Marquez to break down this one, plus some other action in a wild weekend Ooh. of sports, guys. So, yeah. stuck on the couch. I'm going <laughs> to pull what Justin just said a big cool down for mm. the Cowboys. Yes. Because, I mean,. Oof, if you're a Cowboys fan, that was just tough to watch. What were they, 27-10? Yeah. 27-10 in the third quarter, and then uh, the wheels started to fall apart a little bit here. So this is early on. Cowboys mm -hmm. go up 21-7. Feeling good. control. 27-10 right here, and then they allowed Trevor Lawrence to get loose. Zay Jones, this guy killed me in fantasy football last week. Three Thank touchdowns? <laughs> yeah. Three touchdowns. Three and touchdowns. Trevor Lawrence finally looking like the number one overall pick mm -hmm. that he was. But, and then Dak. Yeah, that's what's been really, really hurting the Cowboys over the past couple of weeks. Dak, I think he's the leading quarterback in interceptions in the past eight Not games. Nine picks, I think, last eight games. It's been a tough uh, go around for Dak there. And uh, what was this? This was the, the Jags took the lead on that but play there. Cowboys mm -hmm. doing what they did to the Texans, marching down the field, out, and then beautiful toss mm -hmm. into the end zone. So taking the lead here and then 
Well, Jacksonville ended up coming down the field, getting a game-tying field goal here to send this game into overtime. And then this is one of the craziest uh, sort of plays. Besides that Raiders-Patriots play oh, at the end, this goodness. was also pretty crazy too as well. Jacksonville takes it to the house for the win. Right there. And uh, <laughs> so just looking at playoffs, right, mm -hmm. they, they're yeah. obviously a playoff lock at this point in the NFC. Mm -hmm. But I think they actually clinched last yeah, night. They based clinched. On the, oh, yeah, they with clinched. Washington losing to New York, yeah. uh, Dallas clinches a spot. You're welcome. Right. There, there we go. go. <laughs> and so, but, but it's crazy because all four NFC East teams mm -hmm. could really be yeah. in. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But as far as the Cowboys, though, it seems like they're locked into the fifth spot now because uh, Max's Eagles here, I think, are way too far <laughs> Just ahead. Right under if the, the bus. Cowboys, if the Cowboys had taken care of business mm -hmm. here. Let yesterday, then this upcoming game against Philly would have obviously been closer to a division title game. But now Philly, three games up, yep. three games left. I think the Eagles are in cruise control now for the top seed in the okay. NFC. Christmas Eve day, though. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be nice. Yeah. It's going to be a fun game. Yeah. yeah. Speaking yeah. of fun games, the Texans oh, boy. looking like actual <laughs> playoff <laughs> contenders. He's like, Two oh. weekends in a row, they challenge good teams. They challenge well, good teams over time. Go. And we know this team very well. Well, now we know the Texans very well. <laughs> really putting on a show against the Chiefs, who are trying to go Why? back to Super Bowl. Why? Why? And that's, that's one of the it. questions. You know, these guys are playing for their jobs. They're playing, you know, I mean, obviously the Texans have been out of this you thing not on the Davis since, like, Mills September. I, you know, I, at this point, Jeff look, Driscoll, saying, can we just lose the rest of our games, get Davis that number Mills one pick in the season? putting on the wheels right here and just sneaking it in. <laughs> no, but If you're a Chiefs fan, you are <laughs> a little bit worried. I know everyone's saying, if you're the Texans, you know, Get that number one overall pick. Yeah. Why there even play around Bryce like this? Young. Here we go. Kevin H. Town. Bryce Young. No CJ Stroud. No. And so obviously Travis Kelsey doing his thing. Yeah. Yeah. But and we're not gonna go through all the highlights. I'm sorry, Texans fans. <laughs> At the end well, though, it was a good show in. It Houston was. Again. Yeah. Uh, overtime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chiefs ended up pulling it out, yeah. getting that win. Speaking of a team though that, that didn't get the win, that really this uh, was tough. Yeah. yeah, going back to Friday afternoon, UTSA, the Roadrunners, looking for their first ever bowl win in program history. Things got off to a pretty good start for UTSA, but then Frank Harris got banged up, and you could tell yeah. that he was just not the same. Uh, he rolled his ankle, I think, in the second quarter. UTSA was up 9-0 uh, at that point, and then uh, Harris just did not look Oof. the same after that. Yeah. Yeah, and you just you do feel bad because two Conference USA championships mm -hmm. and yeah. still searching for the first bowl game win. Yeah, well, at least we know that Frank is coming back, so mm -hmm. they'll get another shot at it probably next season. They are in a different conference, the American Athletic, but a uh, shout-out to UTSA. Tough loss there to Troy. Of course. Friday afternoon. Yeah. And uh, speaking of tough losses, we just yeah. had the Spurs lose in mm -hmm. Mexico, and now mm -hmm. they're tied. I believe they're tied with the Rockets. It's the worst Record yes, in the West. Yes, the the wobble for Wembayama. Here we go. Continues. <laughs> this is the what, is that, did you just come up with that? That was pretty good. <laughs> no, I didn't. I oh, took okay. Someone else. Um, yeah. So this game tonight, Spurs back on the road after that trip in Mexico City. Tough loss to the Heat. They competed though. Uh, Keldon Johnson's questionable for tonight's game. So we will see if the Spurs can get back on the winning side of things. So I'm not going to take the Justin Horn approach of they're making the oh, playoffs, boy. but <laughs> both these teams, they're both fun to watch. They both have a they lot are? of young talent. Yeah. Good Ty highlights. Branham had a great game on uh, the other day on and Saturday. Because I think he played, what, in the G League the night he before? Did. Yeah, yeah. Okay, guys, like a responsible bar, we're, we're shutting you guys down. Uh, <laughs> cutting you off. Nice. Go Spurs go. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. 9, 40, 47 degrees. You've had enough. Now, you're watching GMSA at 9. We'll be right back. Some of this rain has been no joke today. I know, all morning. Yeah, there's been some really good downpours. I mean, driving to work, it was it was uh, sort of blinding rain, at least for a few minutes. That's mm -hmm. kind of the nature of it. It comes through and then you get a break and maybe a little bit more rain. So we'll get right to the radar and show you uh, where that heavy rain is right now. We see that in parts of Gonzales County. That's where they've had some of the heaviest rain and some small hail, as we showed you earlier. Uh, we've got a picture out of Gonzales where there's some, some peace I see associated with these stronger thunderstorms. Not a surprise. Again, that's a possibility. But generally speaking, we're going to start to see things kind of wind down west to east. And I think we're already starting to see that here across Bear County. The rain has become noticeably lighter. We'll zoom in here around uh, the city. And there still is a nice little downpour uh, there up around the Windcrest area. That's working up along I-35. But it is quickly moving north and east. The rest of the rain we see here around San Antonio is, is light. But all the roads are wet at this point. And you still could get a, a clap of, of thunder, perhaps. A little heavier storm here right along I-10, also working its way towards Seguin. So if you're watching us from Seguin, you should see this here pretty soon. I'd say within the next 
uh, five to ten minutes, uh, maybe 15 minutes, you'll see some of that heavier rain moving in. And that's the story around Gonzales as well. You just saw one heavy thunderstorm exit. We've got another one headed your way. And this one does have quite a bit of lightning strikes uh, associated with it. We'll pause it and we'll put on the threats here. And again, anywhere you see that purple color, that's where there could be a little bit of small hail mixed in. It's not large at all. It's not going to cause any damage. Just be aware if, if you're hearing some of the something hitting the window, that's uh, that's what it is. Uh, so that's the latest with the radar and the rain. Uh, let's go outside at the airport. We've got rain still coming down and temperatures at 48 degrees. Uh, that's across the board, except Randolph, you're down to 46. Northerly wind at 12 miles per hour makes it feel all that much colder. And uh, we've got wind chills in the low 40s right now. So the forecast temperatures around the area hold pretty steady because we're going to have the clouds. It's going to be really hard for these clouds to break even once the rain leaves. And again, that happens around midday. Uh, the clouds hold. Uh, so by 4 o'clock, we're looking at cloudy skies, 51 degrees. If you're watching from Lakey, Del Rio, Eagle Pass, you will get some sun today. And that will warm temperatures up. 57 potentially in Lakey this afternoon with some sun there. Everyone else still within the clouds. Uh, the big picture here, rain stretches from San Antonio over to Houston and Dallas, across East Texas, Louisiana, and then you've got snow north of that, across parts of Missouri and the, in the Midwest, and then a lot of snow across the Dakotas and Montana. This is where the really cold stuff is. It's negative 20 right now in Cup Bank, negative six Glendive, negative two Bismarck, even colder across parts of Canada. That cold air is poised to spill down the plains and eventually make its way into Texas and we think that happens on Thursday. So let's time it out for you. That cold core moves towards the Midwest tomorrow. And then by Thursday morning, there it is. It's starting to enter the Texas Panhandle. Amarillo will get it first. And then by noontime, that front's on our doorstep. We could make it into the upper 60s, maybe even close to 70 briefly Thursday before the bottom falls out. And I do mean uh, the, these temperatures will tumble quickly. 19 by Friday morning. I think we could even go a little colder than that. We're forecasting 18 actually for Friday morning, but a lot of places in Texas will be in the teens, if not single digits. So this uh, cold air means business. And look at the wind chills Friday morning. Northerly winds 20 to 25 means wind chill values could be around two here in San Antonio, negative numbers. Bernie over to Kerrville. So beware, Friday morning is probably our coldest morning. And if you look at the numbers here, we're thinking 18 Friday, but only 34 for the high. So we may briefly get back above freezing Friday afternoon with some sun. The Hill Country will not. Hill Country could spend 48 hours below freezing. That's, that's the period where you got to protect the plants, the pipes, if they're exposed, especially. Uh, bring the pets in with this kind of weather and check on check on your neighbors uh, with this kind of cold air. ERCOT does expect there to be enough power. We've been through these kind of cold snaps before. This is not February 2021, but we do need to take preparations. And by Christmas Day 47, but we're still starting off at 22. So Christmas morning, it will be cold. Santa won't have any navigation issues, but he will be wearing a big, big coat as he usually does. Uh, 66 Thursday, but there you see it, 34 Friday, 39 Saturday, 47 on Sunday, guys. Cole, thank you, Justin. And another big story that we're monitoring today, the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th Capitol attack, holding their last public hearing this afternoon. Potentially explosive moves are expected from the committee with possible referrals of criminal charges, including insurrection against former President Donald Trump. NBC's John Carl has the latest. The January 6th committee plans to take a dramatic step this morning in its final hearing, recommending Donald Trump be charged with multiple crimes related to the attack on the U.S. Capitol and the events leading up to it. Among the crimes the committee believes Donald Trump may be guilty of, obstructing an official proceeding, defrauding the United States, and insurrection. After more than a year of investigation, over a thousand sworn depositions and 10 televised hearings, the central conclusion of the January 6th committee has been perfectly clear. That the central cause of January 6th was one man, Donald Trump, whom many others followed. None of this would have happened without him. He was personally and substantially involved in all of it. The committee has made the case Donald Trump abused his power as president to try to overturn the 2020 presidential election, inciting his supporters with lies about election fraud. We're going to walk down and I'll be there with you. 
The committee may also call for action against others, too, including Republican members of Congress who defied committee subpoenas. But prosecuting Trump or anybody else is entirely up to the Justice Department, which has already been conducting its own investigation for months, now overseen by special counsel Jack Smith. Such an, employ, uh, an appointment underscores the department's commitment to both independence and accountability in particularly sensitive matters. And that was John Carl reporting. Now the committee also plans to issue its final report later this week, not just because their investigation is over, but because when Republicans take over Congress on January 3rd, the committee will cease to exist. Now the committee says it will also release thousands of pages of transcripts of sworn interviews it's conducted, a treasure trove of information and record for history of the events that led to the attack on the U.S. Capitol. And we will be broadcasting today's hearing as soon as it begins, which will be about noon our time. You can watch it on air and online. Right now, 950, 47 degrees. And after the break, the Knives Out sequel is almost here. We're going to have a behind the scenes look before it drops on Netflix. And welcome back. It's 953. The sequel to Knives Out appeared briefly in theaters last month. And if you missed it, no one spoiled it for you yet. It's streaming on Netflix starting Friday. CNN's David Daniel talked with the mystery's creator and cast, and we promised no spoilers. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. You expected the mystery. But for one person on this island, this is not a game. Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery, reunites Daniel Craig as Benoit Blanc with writer-director Ryan Johnson. We love being on set together. We yeah. love working together. We, yeah. we value the work for the same thing. Yeah, and, it's, you know, it's a, that's a rare thing. If you, it's a rare thing. And if you get to find it, you cling on to it as hard as possible for as long as possible until you hate each other. Mm -hmm. it's just, that's just show business. Inevitable. <laughs> I've got the pre-definite detective in the world at my murder mystery party. That is... So legit. Johnson recruited an A-list cast to join Craig in the new Who Done It. Not that it was difficult. This is the spring of 2021. Let's remember <laughs> what was going on. We were in our living rooms in our sweatpants yeah. for a year and on a half. The couch. And when the phone rang, we answered the phone and went, "Yes." Yes, whoever like, it is. That, now who is this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ryan! Terrific. <laughs> this is even better. What <laughs> Greece? <laughs> Are we even going to talk about the elephant in the room? Am I the elephant? Yeah. You're the elephant. You're not that bad. Everybody's had such amazing careers and has done films that I've really, really loved. Yeah. So to actually be in the room and see how everyone works and to be a part of it together was not only fun, but there was a lot of wisdom. Lock the doors. Stay in your rooms. Everyone is in danger. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. All right, starting Friday. Yeah, the, the rain's beginning to move out. We're still seeing some heavier rain around the shirts and Seguin area, but that is kind of the last of it. And we'll see a few more light showers before everything shifts out of here by noontime. Still only up around 51 today, though, because cloud cover hangs around. Some fog tomorrow morning, clouds next couple days, but the big story now, that front coming in on Thursday, it will be cold. We can't say that enough. 18 Friday morning, 21 Saturday morning, 22 Sunday morning. Some hard freezes there and temperatures in the 30s for highs, even with sun Friday and Saturday. Good morning. Lows are sparkling. There is yes. crystallized with with frigidity. <laughs> exactly. <so> cold. Exactly. <laughs> we appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Justin. Have a great day.